Why is it the fact that people know that you're a Q or an Alpha or an AKA or a Delta before they know that you're a believer in Christ? How come I see that you're an AKA on your license plate before that I know that you are a disciple of Jesus Christ? How come I see the letters on your shirt before I know that you are a blood bought believer? Make it make sense. <laughs> And today I want to talk about the top five idols that I believe that we have as believers and not just as believers that the world has and why and how we need to repent from them. And quite frankly, I believe that what separates Christians from the rest of the world and from the rest of all religions is the fact that we are sure of our salvation and we know exactly where, where we are going to go when God calls us home or before he, or when he returns. So I don't think this is even relevant to even be fearful about the end times because we as Christians are sure of our salvation. But ultimately, I do believe that as Christians and as believers, we constantly, constantly need to live a heart of repentance and we need to constantly be in a state of humility and understanding and recognizing our sins um, and, and remembering that because we fall short of our sins, we need to constantly be in a state of repentance. And I wanna talk about the top five idols that we need to repent for as believers um, so that we can continue to live a life that is honorable and pleasing to the Lord. So without further ado, let's get started. So when it comes to the top five idols, I really believe that sex has been the number one idol of the world today. We look all around the world and we see this slogan, sex sells, sex sells, and this is so true. Like, sex literally is plastered on our TVs and shows and movies and all of that. And I know firsthand as a Christian woman that sex is an idol because even throughout my dating journey, I've had so many relationships end simply because men did not want to wait until marriage have sex. So if I've seen it firsthand as a Christian woman, then I can only imagine how, how, how bad it is amongst the rest of the world. Sex has become a huge idol and people are, would rather feed into their lust and their sexual desires than turn away from them and give it to God. And that's just simply a sign of the end times. So in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 4, the Bible describes the last days and it says that within the last days, people will be lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. And we see that all around the world today. We see powerful men that are falling because they can't control their sexual desires. We see people who would rather kill innocent babies than to control their sexual desires. We see men that would rather feed into their sexual desires rather than get married. We see it all the time. God is calling us as believers to repent from our sexual idolatry and turn back to God. Sex is not a bad thing, but God wants us to have sex within the confines of marriage. Oftentimes the enemy always tries to come and tempt me with lust and sexual morality. And sometimes I get to a point where I almost even fall for his schemes a little bit. I remember there was a time where I was tempted to give in to sexual morality. I'm not gonna lie, I, I wanted to a little bit because you know, I, I'm a human and I have desires. Not They're not always good desires, but sometimes I fall weak. And I remember I was faced with this opportunity and I was wrestling and going back and forth and the enemy started putting thoughts into my mind and he reminded me how I have had girlfriends and guy friends who have dated their boyfriends or their girlfriends and although they were believers and they loved God, they ended up slipping up and they ended up giving into sexual sin and having sex that one time or that two time or that second time. Um, but although they slipped up, um, they were fine and they ended up getting married and the enemy would um, remind me of those scenarios and the enemy would remind me of those scenarios and say things like, well, you know, so-and-so, she had sex with her boyfriend. It was just one time, but hey, at the end of the day, they did get married. Well, you know, you remember he told you that he had sex with his girlfriend just that one time, but guess what? They ended up getting married and I was prompted and I was tempted and to think like, well, you know, Maybe just one time, you know, just one time, you know, nothing bad ever happened to them. Maybe I can just do it this one time. And 
And thankfully, I was able to not feed into that temptation, but it was really, really close. And even me, as someone who is outspoken about sexual purity and someone who teaches the Bible, even I can fall victim to lust and sexual immorality and putting my sexual desires before God. And that's something that we need to repent from because, um, as the Bible says, we have to flee from sexual immorality. It's not something that we can fight. It's not something that we can face and tackle head on. It's something that we need to run from and something that we need to call in the Holy Spirit for us to avoid. So just continue to stay prayed up. If you are someone that struggles with lust or sexual immorality, I really, really want to warn you that this is something that you really, really need to give to God because as the Bible says, um, those who practice sexual immorality will not inherit the kingdom of God. So it's something that you really need to submit your heart to and give to God. Um, so it's something that you really need to submit and give to God because if you don't, it could really overtake you and destroy you. We've seen so many powerful men right now that are dealing with sexual allegations, um, trafficking allegations. It, we see so many powerful men right now who have fallen or who have even tarnished their reputation simply because they don't know how to control their lusts or their sexual desires. And we are no different. If Solomon, the wisest man who ever lived, fell because of his sexual immorality, who are we to feel like we are immune to that? So if you are a Christian and if you are battling with sexual immorality or lust, please continue to submit and give that to God and trust that God will give you desires that please him and ultimately he will help you to overcome that. So just continue to stay prayed up, continue to pray and fast, and with the help of the Holy Spirit, God can definitely deliver you from any type of sexual immorality or sexual addiction that you are facing or experiencing. Number two, another huge idol that we have as believers is the idol of marriage. I see it all the time and quite honestly, I used to feed into the idolatry of marriage until I realized that I just had to submit and give that all to God. I know that as I continue to get older, I'm turning 32 in a few days, my parents are like, when are you getting married? When are you getting married? And I used to like feed into that until I realized that I just need to give it to God because I realize that if I hold on to something that I want so bad, that's when the enemy is really able to come in and attack me. There have been times where I've wanted so desperately to get married that I would low key become like super sad. I would get overly lonely. I like that it was just the time when the enemy would come in and swoop in and just torment me for what I wanted so bad. And I was like, enough. Like, I do not even want to be tormented with the idea of being a wife or a mom. And instead of even suppressing it, I no longer, I used to just suppress it and just be like, forget that. Like, I'm just gonna ignore this feeling. I don't even suppress it anymore. All I did was simply say, Lord, this is my desire, you take it. I give it to you and you do with it what you want with it and I trust in you and I trust in your divine timing. Because I've started to realize that if I don't submit my desire to God, then that's when I can begin to compromise in every single area of my life. I remember I was talking to one of my girlfriends a few days ago and she was like, you know, the, re the reason why you are probably single for so long is because you publicly preach sexual purity. And I was like, yeah, I, I do understand that I'm probably been single for so long because men already know right away that I'm not about the games. Like I'm gonna need a ring before I engage in sex. I get it. I get that the reason why I'm probably been single for so long is because I do promote sexual purity, but I realize that, and there have been times where um, people have come to me and they're like, why do you always talk about sex? You always talk about sex. Why do you always talk about sex? Can you talk about something else? And I just feel like this is what God called me to do. Like I'm so passionate about it. And there have been times where I've been tempted to be like, you know, maybe I need to relax on that. Maybe I shouldn't talk about it so much. Maybe I should just talk about something else. But I feel like this is such an important matter in today's age. 
And sometimes the enemy would come in and say things like, you know, why don't you just stop talking about sex so much? Like, you know, you probably would appear more attractive to men if you would just stop talking about sexual purity. But I rebuked that in the name of Jesus. And I told her, I was like, if I have to take one for the team and preach sexual purity and never get married, then I'm just gonna have to be okay with that. Like, I'm willing to take one for the team. I'm willing to be that voice for sexual purity. And if that means that I never get married or never have kids, may Christ still be glorified. And, um, and I have to just get to the point where it's like, even if I never get married, even if I never have children, my life is still going to be lit. I'm still going to be fully used by God. I'm still going to be prosperous. I'm still going to be glowing. I'm still going to be fine. I'm still going to be, I'm still going to be walking in my purpose. I'm still going to be doing everything that God has called me to do. And I have to realize that my desire to get married, my desire to be a wife, it's still a desire, but I'm going to submit it to God and I'm still going to go full force and do everything that God has called me to do. And the Bible talks about this in Psalm chapter 91 verse 4 and it says that God's faithful promises are our shield and buckler. God's faithful promises are our armor and protection. And I'm not going to let the enemy make me think that, oh, if you keep talking about sexual purity, you're never going to get married. I rebuke that in the name of Jesus because the man that God has for me is going to see that as a beautiful thing and it, it will be an honor and a privilege for him to wait. And I hold on to God's faithful promises and I stay rooted and grounded in my faith. And as humbly as I can say this, I know that God made me a really, really amazing person. He made me an incredible helpmate. He made me very gifted, very talented. Um, and I know that he would not waste someone like me. And I know that he would not design me specifically to be single. I'm too good of a helpmate to be single. And that's the kind of, the, and that's the kind of mindset that we need to have as women. Like whenever the enemy comes around and says, oh, you're never gonna get married, you're never gonna have children, I'd be like, I'm like, Satan, get away from me. Like, I'm too bomb not to be a wife. I'm too bomb not to be a mom. Like, I'm too bomb not to be a wife. I'm too loving and nurturing not to ever be a mother. Like, get out of my face with that because I know God doesn't create things just to waste them. Like, if he didn't assign me or ordain me to be a wife, that would be a terrible thing to waste. Like, that's the kind of mindset that I have. Like, I know I'm bomb, I know I'm equipped, and I know it's just in God's timing. So I think that's just the, the, the mindset that we need to have as women. Like it's all in God's timing. We just need to continue to stay rooted and trust in God and continue to meditate on his faithful promises. And any idol that we make of marriage, we need to repent of it, submit it, and give it to God. Because if we don't, it can completely distract us from our purpose and um, it can cause us to compromise, which is something that God definitely doesn't want us to do. Another idol that I believe that we have made as believers is the idol of sororities and fraternities. And I have wrestled with God for such a long time about saying this because I did not want to make this video because I know that there are so many amazing believers who adore Jesus, who are in sororities and fraternities. And God has been telling me to speak out against fraternities and sororities. And I've even had my entire outline written since August, since the beginning, since August, 2023. And I've sat on it for so long, but I'm not going to be disobedient anymore. And I'm going to speak out against sororities and fraternities. And I'm just going to say it like it is. So I wrote a letter to my sorority, Phi and you. I, I pledged to them when I was in college. And this is a letter of me officially denouncing and renouncing all ties that I have pledged to the Phi and you sorority when I was in college. And it says, Dear Phi and you fraternity, I'd like to officially inform you that I am renouncing myself from your organization. I officially renounce every oath and agreement that I have made with your organization. Please remove me from your database as I am no longer affiliated with the Phi and you fraternity. My sole allegiance belongs to my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Thank you. And a lot of believers may think I'm being super extreme for saying this, but I don't pledge my allegiance to anyone or any organization other than the Lord Jesus Christ. So Jesus tells us in Matthew chapter 5, verses 34 through 35, 
do not swear or take an oath at all. He says either by heaven because this is God's throne or by earth because this is God's footstool. So I ultimately detached myself from the sorority that I pledged in college, but I officially wrote a letter because I wanted to make it official to them as well that I'm no longer associated with their organization. And a lot of Christians or believers may think, oh, it's fine, being in a sorority or fraternity is fine, look at all the community service that we do, look at all the great things that we do. Well, the Lord wanted me to tell you that your good works are filthy rags to him and he could care less how much community service that you do. He doesn't care how much good works that you do. He cares that you pledge to an organization when he told you not to. He cares that you pledged and made an oath to a man-made organization when he told you not to. And I believe that God is calling believers to come out of agreement with every single oath and agreement that they made to their sorority and their fraternity. Why is it the fact that people know that you're a Q or an Alpha or an AKA or a Delta before they know that you're a believer in Christ? How come I see that you're an AKA on your license plate before that I know that you are a disciple of Jesus Christ? How come I see the letters on your shirt before I know that you are a blood-bought believer? Make it make sense. God is a jealous God and he does not want us pledging to any organizations or secret societies. God wants all of us and he does not want our hearts or our, our allegiance pledged to anything other than him. So if you are in a sorority or fraternity, um, and you hear this message, I would really consider that you take what I said in prayer because I truly believe that God is calling all believers to repent and renounce from any pledges or oaths that they have made with their sororities or fraternities. So I'm going to do a part two of all the idols that I believe that we as believers have made. Um, so stick around. I'm going to be posting that in a few days. But other than that, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in another video. Stay glamorous.